Salutations, Celestial Sightseers. I'm David Fuller with Eyes on the Sky. What's up this week? Neptune, the eighth planet, reaches opposition on September 1st, and you can see the planet with simple binoculars. That's right, you don't even necessarily need a telescope to be able to spy the furthest planet in our solar system. Okay, it's not really the furthest planet. We all know that Pluto is actually the farthest one, right? That's okay, you can still see this, and it doesn't take a lot of magnification to do so. So let's switch over to Stellarium so you can see where in the sky to start looking for it. We're generally facing southeast, not long after it gets dark, and I've highlighted where Neptune is in the sky. And as you can see, it's in a rather star-poor region in the constellation of Aquarius. But we're actually going to start looking from Capricornus. However, even those stars are not terribly bright, so we're going to start at a few brighter ones to make sure that we're looking in the right location. So let's begin at Pegasus, which is going to be this square shape over towards the east. It's going to look a little bit more like a diamond uh, as it's on its side, sort of like this. We're going to follow that across this way over towards into Aquarius. Once we get to Aquarius, we're going to kind of hop along Aquarius and then down towards Capricornus. But let's take off all these helpful star constellation lines and hop this way without having to actually look at those uh, as a crutch. This star right here is Alpha Rats in Andromeda. We're going to go diagonally across the Great Square of Pegasus. That's about 20 degrees of sky. You can measure that simply just by holding your fists together at arm's length, and the two stars should be about on either side of where your fists are. We're going to keep going that same direction out this way. Now, don't get confused by these stars, which are the head and neck of Pegasus. So we're going to go under the head and neck to this star, another 20 degrees, which is going to be Alpha Aquarii. And now we can drop a fist away and only just go 10 degree distances. We're going to go from Alpha Aquarii to Beta Aquarii, turn ourselves about 90 degrees down towards the horizon, and wind up at Deneb Algeti in Capricornus. And if we zoom in on this area of the sky, we can see that there's a fair number of stars to be able to guide our way over to where we want to see Neptune. But measuring that, we can see that it's a good 14 degrees of sky across. So since binoculars are only about 7 degrees or so, that's a long way to go, just hoping that we find it there. And then once we get there, how do we know for sure that we found the planet? So let's go ahead and turn off our measuring tool. We'll turn on the ocular view, which you can see up here in Stellarium, which is very useful. You can set the field of view and magnification you want to use for uh, given eyepieces and telescopes. And I've got this set for binoculars. So this green circle is a 7 degrees field of view. And when you have Deneb al -Jedi centered, remember you're going to do that 20, 20, 10, 10 to find it. This star, Nashira, which is a uh, almost fourth magnitude star, is going to be in the same field of view as Deneb al -Jedi, which is third magnitude. So you'll be able to find those fairly simply. These are dimmer stars above it. And we've got some dimmer stars below. So go with these brighter ones. And now go in the same direction as these two stars, opposite of Nashira. So we're going to go this way. And you'll have this star come into your field of view just as Nashira leaves while Deneb al -Jedi is still there. This star is going to be about uh, fourth magnitude. And it is Iota. Aquarii. So that should still be fairly easy to see with most any binoculars. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky, and it's probably the trickiest part of the star hop. Imagine this is the apex of a pyramid that's on its side. So if we look at these stars here and here, and then there's some dim ones here, and then another brightish one here, and then a dim one there, there's sort of this long line that's a base that sort of makes a pyramid angled off on its side. That pyramid is where we're going to go through, but we're going to draw our line, again, Nashira, Deneb al -Jedi, through Iota, to this star, so on the same line, so the brighter of these two stars, but the inner one, and that will bring us to 42 Aquarii. So as Iota is getting ready to leave the field of view, we're going to bring another star into our field of view over on this side. So we've passed through the base of our pyramid, and now gone on to from 42 to this star, which is Sigma 
Aquarii, and that's a 4.8 magnitude star, so that's also a fifth magnitude star. But with this one centered, Neptune is now in our field of view of binoculars. So the, the planet is actually there. And once we um, actually center Neptune, we can also see that there's this other star, Lambda Aquarii, is going to be over on this side, and that star is a 3.7 magnitude star. So if things start to brighten up, you know you've gone a little bit too far. But the way to find Neptune for sure is look for this quadrilateral shape of stars. Neptune is actually very near another star right here. So there are these four seventh magnitude stars between Sigma and Lambda over here. And Neptune is at the end of this quadrilateral set of stars here. Now you've got some other stars that can confuse you as well. But Neptune is pretty close to in the middle of them as of this date. However, if we bring up our date and time window and go through time, you can see that Neptune is going to move closer to Sigma and away from where um, Lambda is. But the moon will, of course, interfere towards the end of September and then a couple days later into October, then we'll have uh, Neptune really into this quadrilateral shape of stars. So I said I would also show you how to find this with a reversed view. And so we'll back our way out and get over to Deneb Al Jedi again. And as you can see, I kind of went backwards that way so you can see the direction we're going to have to go because now Nashira is on this side of Deneb Al Jedi. So it's, it's still the same way in the sky, but it's going to reverse it the way you look at it through your finder scope field of view. So you have to mentally uh, reverse the image. But if you've already done the hop once with binoculars, you're going to have a pretty good idea of what to look for and be able to mentally reverse that as you watch the view in your finder scope. So opposite of Nashira, away from there, from Deneb El Jedi. And then we're going to go over to Iota Aquarii. Deneb El Jedi leaves our field of view. And as that happens, we bring this skewed pyramid shape into the field of view. We're going to look for the brighter two stars and choose the inner one, which is 42 Aquarii. As that goes across and we leave Iota on the other side of the field of view, we're going to bring Sigma Aquarii into our field of view. And as we do, Neptune arrives. If we center that, we now have Sigma on one side. We've got Lambda on the other side and Neptune is centered. So then we can look at that with our telescope, take off the crosshairs, and Neptune would be visible in a telescopic field of view. Now, Neptune is interesting to look at through a telescope because even though it's blue-white and kind of a pale blue color, it doesn't look like a blue-white star does. And that's because, as you can see up here, over in the upper left-hand corner of Stellarium, it shows that it's 2.4 arc seconds of diameter. So you really can see a little tiny bit of disk to the planet. You won't see any detail, but you can see a disk, which is different than a star, which is always going to be point-like in nature. Plus, the planet displays reflected sunlight a little bit differently than a star looks. So you really can tell that you're looking at a planet and not a star. And that's a pretty neat thing to be able to see for the furthest planet away from us in the solar system except for Pluto, of course, right? That's all for this week. Keep your eyes in the sky and your outdoor lights aimed down so we can all see what's up. I'm David Fuller, wishing you clear and dark skies.